Ray White in Life with Elizabeth, featuring Del Moore. Incident number one in the life of Elizabeth occurred the time they were going to try to cram a real long trip into a moderately long weekend. Anyway, every minute counted. Have you ever done this? Elizabeth, how are you today? <laughs> Hasn't the mailman shown up yet? Well, can't you leave till he arrives? Oh, he's bringing a check. Well, what kind of a check? <laughs> Are you chewing a bone? You and me, us? He's bringing a bonus check. <laughs> is he here yet? No. Are you sure your bonus check is in the mail? That Cincinnati office never missed yet. This is the day it always arrives, so just calm down. You got the camera and the maps. They're in the car. See them? No. You got the camera and the maps? They're in the car. You don't suppose we could leave without the check, do you? Oh, honey, we'd never get past Santa Barbara. That's all the only thing to do is to sit down and wait for the mailman. Sure. <laughs> That's right. Give him plenty of time. <laughs> Alvin, wouldn't it be awful if they didn't send your check today? After all, there's so many things that can go wrong. Nothing went wrong. The mailman isn't here, that's all. Suppose they forgot to put stamps on the letter. The Cincinnati office never forgets anything. <laughs> <laughs> you see? <laughs> here we go. Put them down. Who was the bread man? Hi, <laughs> Regis. <laughs> <I read it. laughs> Now, honey, don't look so brought down. After all, you gave the Williams kid that whistle yourself on his sixth birthday. Oh, what? But he's getting a little old for cops and robbers. He's 15. Now, sit down and relax. It's only a little past 10. He'll bring the check in a few minutes, and away we'll go. <laughs> Alvin! What's the matter? Suppose it's a new mailman. Well, so what? He'll find the house. Don't get... No, he won't. Our house number's all faded from the sun. Go paint it. Well, Lisa, there's another one painted on the curb. You'll find the house. Will you stop worrying? But every minute counts. Yeah, I know. Well, see, the, uh, today is Friday. Oh. We'll need all day Friday and Saturday to get there so that we can use all day Sunday and Sunday night to get back. And that gives you just 15 minutes to relax and swim and play a couple of sets of tennis. Elizabeth, if you're being sarcastic, I would like to remind you that you helped plan this trip with me, you know. I'm sorry, darling, but we do have to use every available minute. One detour and we only swim halfway across the pool. Wait a minute. I think I hear something. Hey. Is that him? Is it? Not unless he sells tootie fruity on the side. I'll put the suitcase in the car. It'll help a little bit. Never mind, Alvin. What? I've got it all figured out. You got all what figured out? You said the Cincinnati office was efficient, right? Well, they never miss. All right, picture the scene. A big, efficient office. Yeah? The boss says, Miss Smithers? And she says, yes, Mr. Crovney? And he says, be sure Alvin's bonus check is in the mail by the 23rd. He's probably planning a vacation, and we wouldn't want to disappoint him. Elizabeth, I think you need a sedative. I'm just trying to show you how things can go wrong. And Mr. Crovney probably said, do you have his correct address? And she says, yes, it's 123 Elm Street, Los Angeles. But Mr. Crovney probably didn't even let it go at that. He said, is that Los Angeles, Texas, or California? <laughs> so far, all you're proving is that it's in the mail. Everything's all right so far. She made out the check, and he signed it, and she gave it to the office boy to mail to 123 Elm Street, Los Angeles, California. And then what, what went wrong? What happened? The office boy goofed. A <laughs> little rat. What did he do? Cincinnati's a baseball town. Yeah. The office boy put the letter in his pocket and mailed it after the game. We won't get our check until this afternoon's mail. If it's a double header, we don't get it till tomorrow. Elizabeth, I'm going to call Mr. Fuddy and tell him about that kid. <laughs> 
and we don't want to cost the boy his job. Now, well, maybe you're right. Anybody there? Just the mailman. Oh. The <laughs> mailman? Hey. Bring him in, bring him in. Oh, there it is. Oh, Cincinnati, never forget. Come on. Oh, honey, cut it out now. Come on. It looks like that. It looks like that. Light bill. Light bill, honey. Look. $7.50. Never mind that. You know what? Come on. Is that... Here's a letter from Mama. Do you want to read it? Yes. Honey, <laughs> cut out. No. Please. Wait a minute. What's on the road? Oh, it's a card from the light company. I want to know why we don't pay our seven fifty light bill. <laughs> that, what is that? What is that post? Oh, you can uh, do it. Did you stop acting like a queen, baby? Oh, no, oh. it's just an attitude. Open up. Here we go. Come on. I hate letters that start out occupant. <laughs> Elizabeth, the office boy has got to go. Hello. Oh, oh hello, Mrs. Skinridge. Bags away. No, I... I... You what? You... Yeah, don't go away. Stay right there. I, I'll send the office boy after it. Well, yeah, I'm going to put the bag in the mailbox. In the mailbox. All right. Thank you, Miss Smith. Skin, Skinridge. Skinridge. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Who was it? It wasn't you, mailman. He delivered your check to Mrs. Skinridge. She accidentally steamed it open by mistake. How much? $483. You fool! Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Elizabeth. Have a good time. <laughs> Incident number two in the life of Elizabeth occurred when she was cleaning house one Saturday afternoon. It all started when she discovered that Alvin had quite a few things to get off his chest. The chest of drawers, that is. one little piece of cake. And if a man can't take a piece of cake without his wife screeching all over the house, then something ought to be done. Honey, I'm thinking you're going into show business. Oh, brother, here we go again. No, really, it's a magic act. Now watch. Watch. <laughs> I call it Vesuvius and eruption. Oh, listen, you are a sarcastic, nasty little woman. Thank you, darling. <laughs> Oh, now as an encore, I'm going to figure out what some of this stuff is. Honey, cut it out. Now, you're getting everything all mixed up. What are you about it, honey? You can always rearrange it with an egg beater. No kidding, honey. There's a lot of stuff here that I need. I bet there are a lot of little goodies here. Stuff back where it belongs. Now, here, honey, look at this. What? Here's a program to a show we went to three months ago. Oh, I'm glad you didn't lose that. There are a lot of important phone numbers on this, Elizabeth. A lot of important numbers on these match covers here, too. See all of these empty covers? Look at there. See? Oh, I thought you'd found a new way to cut down on your smoking. Come with me, Elizabeth. I want to show you something. What? That's your dressing table, right? Yeah. Nary a phone number in sight. And as we approach Elizabeth's dressing table, we see useless perfume bottles, row on row. And in the southern part of the island, which is known as the land of the broken compact, we slowly open the drawer. Oh, and no, I... we don't. Back to Vesuvius. Come on. Oh, I'm up to you and your little trick. Changing the subject. I learned it from you. <clears throat> no kidding, honey. Cut it out now, will you? Seriously, honey, what is all this stuff? Four cufflinks? I'm reasonably certain you only have two arms. Oh, honey. Look, you must remember, dear. Were you a warden in your spare time? Well, look, we men, you know, we are not fortunate enough to carry things around in our purse. All of this came out of a suit that I sent to the cleaners yesterday. Leave it alone. I to take a better look at that. What's that rubber pocket? What's this? Hey, give me that. Give me that. Give, give. No, no, wait, no. Oh, wait. oh, Joe's garage. 
Well, at the very least, Elmer's delicatessen. <laughs> phone numbers, just phone... How come just phone numbers and no names? I remember the names. Right, whose number is this? Marzipan, 87691. Uh, the City Hall. Wait a minute, how can you tell if I'm right? I have the most wonderful little book right here. It's known as the Telephone Directory. Oh, that's very funny. That's City Hall, you're right. You see? Whose number is this? Uh, Plymouth 78431762X28119403112947. That happens to be the serial number of my dad's car. Look, since you're being so snug about this, let's take another little trip back to the land of the perfume bottles. And now, as we... Oh, no, you don't. Back to the <laughs> uh, Hold your hand over here like this, so we don't get hit in the face. All right. Oh, really, not a Okay. Oh, honey. Look, why do we have to do this now? I know where everything is. <laughs> <laughs> Will you cut it out? Well, the way I see it is this, Alvin. I'm apt to wander in here and open this drawer by mistake sometime, right? Oh, stop. Well, really, and, and if this stuff jumps out at me, I'm going to be scared and I'll probably faint. And I might fall in the middle of all this and you never would find me. Funny. <laughs> then you'd have to hire a safari, and you know how expensive they are. <laughs> I might starve. Elizabeth, to get back to the original question, why are we doing this now? Because I want to reline all the drawers today. Oh, oh, Alvin, now here's something you really need. A broken boomerang. Hand me that, Elizabeth. Next time we're in Australia, we're going to have it repaired. This is not a broken boomerang. It's a warped ruler. <laughs> We're now about to hear a funny joke. No, really. It, it's a foot from here to here, right? It's a foot. That's one foot that'll never have fallen arches. <laughs> <laughs> I made that up. <laughs> I, I don't think I worded it right. <laughs> well. Boy, you've told some bad ones in your time, but that was worse to the bunch. You just don't appreciate me and... Fallen arches. Oh, honey, now what's your perfectly good jacket doing just crammed in with everything else? I'll hang it up where it belongs. Honestly, you men, you, you cram everything into a little tiny space. Oh. <laughs> 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 Hello, Elmer. Hey, Elizabeth. Yeah? Since you took that jacket out, I've got plenty of room. I think I'll organize my things the way you do. Uh, just don't go near the closet. What? I, I said, uh, just don't go, dear. Who was it? <laughs> Is that supposed to make sense? I don't think I worded it right. Oh, oh, I see. It's another one of your crackpot jokes. <laughs> Look, you can do this by yourself, honey. I have work to do. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think I want to open this. I'll bet it's worse mess than mine was. Go ahead. <laughs> Watch your face. Stand back. See? Packed tightly but neatly. Yeah. <laughs> wait, not so fast. It's not so fast. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. Would you like to explain that? Yeast. <laughs> Incident number three in the life of Elizabeth was all Richard's fault. What it all boils down to is this. Uh, Geraldine just couldn't face Richard's face. In case you don't remember, uh, Geraldine is Richard's wife. And Richard's face is on the front of his head. I don't think I've helped things very much. But let's go back and see for ourselves. Getting late. Yeah, one more chapter. My gosh, at 11.30? <laughs> G. 
Geraldine. Geraldine? Honey, put your shoes on. And go put on a decent shirt. Be right there. Look, if she comes calling at this hour, she ought to take us as is. Honey, you can do that in the other room. Hey, maybe Richard's been hurt. It's an emergency. Emergency? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, my toes. <laughs> Be all right. Tell me all about it. Oh. Oh, Alvin, go get some clothes on. Okay. Okay. Geraldine, I have to know what happened if I'm going to help you. I'm sorry. Is it Richard? What's happened to him? He. He. Oh. Geraldine, what's happened to Richard? If you love him, you have to tell me so I can help. Love him. I hate him. Well, that's more... <laughs> Geraldine, I'm talking about Richard. So am I. Big, stupid Richard. <laughs> Tell me what he's done. Well, you know how he always relies on me for everything? Well, I know he depends on you a lot. Well, when you have a paper head, you have to rely on someone. <laughs> you still haven't told me what he did. Six foot three of nothing. And all of our married life, he's never done a thing without first consulting me, and, and now this. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. And now what? Elizabeth, thanks for letting me get it off my chest. <laughs> but I still don't know what happened. You're the only one I could turn to. You know how this sort of thing gets around. Oh, well, well, wait a minute. <laughs> you won't tell a soul about Richard, will you? I can't. How far is Reno? Oh, Jerry, now you come over here and sit down. We're going to settle this once and for all. What are you going to do? I'm going to call Richard up and have him come over here, and we'll discuss this whatever it is like human beings. But you don't have to call him. He's right out front. I've got him locked in the car. <laughs> Alvin, come here a minute. Now we'll get this all straightened out. What happened? What's the matter? Richard's locked in the car. He can't get locked in a car. All he has to do is lift the handle. He doesn't know that. Who's <laughs> oh. Now tell me what happened. I just can't get over it. It's almost like a declaration of independence. Jerry, Geraldine, I'm going to ask you a direct question, and I want a direct answer. What's Richard done? Haven't I told you? <laughs> You haven't told me at least six different times. Well, you'll see for yourself the minute he walks in here. He won't come in. He's listening to a program on the car radio. <laughs> Imagine. Richard! Told her to cut that out. It's 11.30. Alvin, did you walk across that wet lawn in your bare socks? Bare socks? Well, I told oh, you. Put some slippers on or something. Go on. Look, no one but Richard could cause a trouble like this. Go on. Oh, now you stand right over here. I want you to get the full impact when he walks in. Hi, Elizabeth. Hello, lovey. Hi. Say, let's all go out and sit in the car. There's a wonderful program on. If I know you, you were listening to the heater. You don't see anything. You don't. Look at that face. I think he's pretty. <laughs> See? She used to like me when I was young and cute. Now she hates me because I'm old and cute. All right. Now, what's all the trouble? And don't you send me out for a dry tie or anything. Hello, Richard. As far as I can figure out, Geraldine hates Richard because he's old and cute. <laughs> look at that face. Well, don't say it. No, no, take a good look at it. Yeah, look, Ma, no mustache. That's what he did. He shaved off. Oh, that looks much better. Yeah, I think... Oh! She's upset about it? Well, I think so. Hey, Lovey, I'll grow it back again. Well, sure he will. How long will it take you, Richard? Well, the last one only took three years. Well, honey, 
Maybe the new one will grow in faster. He's had practice. Sure he has. No, I haven't, Alvin. <laughs> he shaved it off. It's that he didn't ask me. Well, I told her it was an accident. How can you shave off your mustache by accident? Well, there was a crack in my shaving mirror. <laughs> so I thought I was shaving off my eyebrow. Uh, everybody shaves off their eyebrow. Richard, do you have your brain deadened regularly, or is it a monthly... Of... Alvin! Geraldine, even you know that he... Geraldine's <laughs> right, Alvin. She may hate him, but she still loves him. What? What? No. I'm going to be the wise man here, and I'm going to interfere where I shouldn't. Well, you can't be a wise man. You're a girl. Uh, Richard, you go on right over there and sit down. Go on. Come here, Jerry. Come on, now, you sit right down next to Richard. Come on, honey. Now, Richard, where you made your mistake, you shaved off your mustache when you know Geraldine prefers you with a mustache. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I forgot. You're a wise man. Yes, sir. Brother. And Geraldine, where you made your mistake, you got much too upset about a little item like a mustache. Although I'll admit it's a pretty ticklish situation. <laughs> <laughs> I just threw that in to cheer everybody up. <laughs> you say he should have consulted me. Sure. He should have, but even so, you got too upset about a mustache. I'm being frank now. Yes, sir. <laughs> I guess you're right, Elizabeth. Now, Alvin had never grow a mustache because he knows how I feel about them. And, and even if he did, he'd ask me first and I'd say no, so either way, he'd, he'd never grow one. <laughs> See, Richard, that's real love. Yes, lovey. You know, it's the funniest thing. I've never been able to stand the thought of, of Alvin with bristles along up here. You never know. I might want to kiss him. Alvin, do this. Uh. Oh, don't be so. uh, Tell us, uh, what was the program in the car? Alvin, like, oh, do it. Real fine, do really. Do it, do it. Come on, Alvin. Like this, Alvin. You watch me, Alvin. <laughs> Richard, do you have a cigarette lighter? Oh, yeah. Here. <laughs> Elizabeth? Nothing. Honey, look, look, I'll, I'll cut it off in the morning. It's just a... It's nothing. Let's, let's talk, talk about something else. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know what we're talking about now. Alvin's wearing a mustache, and he didn't tell Elizabeth about it. Oh. 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 Elizabeth, honey. Oh, it isn't really... Everybody stop. I have a solution for the whole problem. What? Why don't you girls grow mustaches and not tell us about it? <laughs> you mean it? Oh, you mean it? Thank you. You have your time every week Oh, no, no. Hey, you sure are real fine. Hey, you can have one. Say goodbye to the people. Goodbye, everybody. So, really, it is not the only thing you can have. What is that? Good morning, Alvin. Good morning, Alvin. Now, here to say goodbye to you is the lovely star of our show, Betty White. Thank you, Jack. And thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Poor Richard. You know, one time Geraldine sent him to a psychiatrist, and the report came back, genial personality and low mentality. <laughs> so let's face it, Richard's nice and stupid. <laughs> Until we see you again, once more, goodbye, everybody. <laughs>